whenever a phrase, whenever I'm I'm sitting and thinking to myself about life and the fact that like we all live in this existent, you know, when I get metaphysical with it, when I get into that mode, the existential, I always try to come up with a phrase that grounds me because I feel like when I talk to myself, I can get off track very easily. Now I'll tell myself I'm getting off track and say, okay, what are the connections here that I'm trying to make? Why did I go this deep into the thought? And I always try to land a phrase that makes all the things that I talk about have better cohesion than just rambling because maybe I'm emotionally unstable, uh, unstable at the moment and I just need something to ground me more than it being just a reaction to whatever topic I'm approaching in my head. And maybe I'm saying, I don't want to do it. Like I don't need that blah, blah, blah. It's more than that. It's me attempting to find some type of dignity within my, my, my speech. So I know where that could lead for emotional growth. Like, I didn't just waste time talking to myself about how, like, oh, the colors of the room are so pretty. Like, I I thought about, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't space out. Anyway. So as I'm preparing for the show yesterday, and then felt out, like I was streaming the whole time. And nobody could see it. I, I recognized that throughout everything that I had talked about, one of the things that was missing was how I felt about the commodity, the the way we commodify hobbies. Now, this isn't a revolutionary thought. We've all known, we've all felt that, like we've heard so many videos on it, blah, blah, blah. So when I started talking about it, it felt like I was being facetious thinking that this was a novel idea. So my brain then said, okay, play into that fear, make it a novel idea, make it something nobody said before. What's the phrase? And I came up with it the same way I came up with, I need days off in capitalism. That whole 50 minute, like train of thought was off that one phrase. And I found a phrase for this one. We made everything that we liked a job. We gave up what made us feel like kids. Collectively. Children right now are included in this. All of humanity at some varying degree. And when I say all of humanity, now obviously there are tribes, there are different cultures, there are people who don't live within the capitalistic like mindset. But even there, even there, thus does exist an error in a fundamental understanding of what youth is supposed to entail. Now, okay, see, this is where we go. This is, oh, we're going to, this is, we're going to be one of those. We're going to have to leap off the point in order for me to make that land a little harder. Because what I just said is not a pleasant thing. So I'm going to use one anecdote and I'm going to use one real world, like common case. Let's start with the anecdote. So yesterday, as I was outside, you know, relaxing, (laughs) relaxing, um, I saw these two kids running down the street and it was like, cold damp it was like lightly drizzling but it was more that it was cold i want you to pay attention to that so as they're running the one dude in front is like the one dude in front is like you ain't never gonna catch me i'm too fast for you i like and it's like i'm gonna turn up the speed and he just start he darts across the street like fast but it felt like he was slow but i'm thinking maybe that's because i've just seen faster shit Um, and, and he, the kid behind him was like, copy, no, I can catch you. I can catch you. I can, I swear to God, I can catch you. And he ate the fucking 
ground. And I'm not talking about the sidewalk. He was in the street and just, you know that the, the meme with the TikTok and the guy who's just sliding on the ice? It was this kid. <laughs> like, he slid in sections. Like, he was like, one, two, three, four. And he just kept going down. And he slid his, like, face. Like, he tried to stop it with his hands, but he slid his face into the ground. And I was like, that shit is funny. How is that not funny? Little kids falling is funny to me. So his man's, I, I I had to yeah I told him like yo yo no no your man's fell your man's fell turn around like look, and like he not catching you because he was about to keep going, and and what what has smoked me was the very first thing this kid did when he turned around as the other kid was getting up was pull out his phone and he's be like, yo, I got to catch this. I got to get this. And so he's making fun of him and I'm sitting there. I asked him like, you all right? And he's like, yeah, I'm good. And as they're walking off, he's still doing it. But then he does something that like, I didn't see coming. And he's like, ah, and he puts his arm around him and gives him a hug, like an apology, you know, like one of them, and it like made me immediately say out loud. That's why a lot of my friendships feel very like empty and hollow, because that's what being a, a brother in the hood, that's what being friends was about for me. Who's going to who falls and who's going to laugh, but also like make sure you good. Like who's going to pick you up when you fall? Those was your homies. Like they, we gonna bust your ass. We gonna bust your ass about it. Like, but we gonna pick you up at the same time. What time are we ever gonna be in, where an adult slips, and like the other adults around them, like laugh at him, but like pick him up? I live in New York. Most like, most like, most people. Most people just keep it pushing. And it made me think that like friendship was, was, was that, that was what, like who you meeting up with your link cable, like with your link cable to trade Pokemon, who you meeting up with to play Kingdom Hearts 2, who you meeting up with to play SmackDown versus Raw 2007, who would you allow into your house for Budokai 2? Like you, you, where, where do I have those friendships now? What are they defined by? What are they, what are they characterized by that gives me that same feeling? When I leave out my house to go see somebody, do I feel the same way as when I did when I went to go leave to go play Budokai with a couple friends of mine? Is that a negative or is that a positive? Is that growth or is that regression? So I think about the hobbies that we share. Because when I was playing Marvel versus Capcom 2 over at the uh, at the at the grocery store around the corner. It was because it was an arcade machine and it was 25 cents to play. I could blow three, four dollars playing a couple matches didn't but somebody new came in let's play some nobody came in i could play by myself my boys was there we played it around like the game like uh snk was over there uh metal slug was over there obligatory yeah we're, i'm gonna get into that i'm gonna get into that that's gonna be the real world example um it just made me think about what type of hobbies do I have? And why is it that that's not attracting the type of friendship that I think I would incur? And then I realized that a lot of my hobbies are commodified to make money. Where does friendship fit in there? I meet more people who are willing to pay me than people that I'm willing to spend time around. The payment feels better than a friendship 
because most of my friends are broke. So like I could create a vision with them with my videography, but then there's the added stress of time. Do I have time for that? Why would I go to somebody's house to play them, bro? You uh, connection, bro. Get a good internet. And like, I'll literally be able to sit here and play seven hours instead of traveling for an hour and a half to go see you to play three hours and then have to travel an hour and a half back. Commodity. Utilization. This is where society is moving, right? You can't pull back on that because what I just explained to you is a neutral good. The fact that I could play all of my friends in one lobby and we could hear each other on the voice chat. We stopped disease spread that way. Nobody incurs transportation fees. It's pretty much cheaper to run that PC for a whole day and be on the, on the phone with your friends like than to pay for gas, travel, sit in traffic, all this and that. Less environmental impact. That's what we want. So why is it that I'm having this conversation then? Real world example. Oh, I love that segue. I, I, I love that segue. Real world example. In what universe does having money not absolve you of being able to think about executing ideas that you normally wouldn't be able to even conceive. If you make $45,000 or less a year, the amount of mobility you have to take a vacation is hindered on two main factors. Do you have enough funds to cover your ass? If God forbid, uh, a meteor, yes, I'm making the don't look up reference. Here it is. It's coming. A meteor that hits the or like hits like your hometown while you're out on vacation. You got no job. You lost everything. A flood, natural disaster, a fire, and we can make it real world. <clears throat> you got enough funds to cover you in case something like that happens while you're gone. And two, when you take this vacation, is it going to be in a place safe that you'll enjoy? Two main factors. Do you have the resources that will still be there when you come back? And what are you going to do on this vacation that makes it feel valuable enough to spend time and money on? Now, for a lot of people, I could cons for not for a lot of people. I'm sorry. Let me phrase rephrase that for artists doing things like live streaming and creating and sitting there is intrinsic value in the idea that not only am I getting better, but this has the worthy potential to sell and I will never sell pieces if I don't make them. So part of the fun is making them. Then you worry about that. Without a nest egg, without some type of security, how do I know the time that I spend on this earth is worth going forward with? Because in reality, no matter how enjoyable life can be for any range of money in any one point on this planet, some cultures live without money and are doing fine. If we all created these avenues and lanes, why did our, our entertainment, why did our creativity become a point of contestation with worth? not how because i can sit here for 20 hours and explain to you how and that's what i meant earlier oh look at this beautiful and oh, we're going back to it just to make sure you listen just to make sure you're paying attention that's what made this for me a novel idea not that it hasn't been said before but now i'm asking the question of why because the how the where and the whens are easy to find and you can go through the nuance of like what, what what's the name of it the the um like the books, the invention of money, um, the invention of the economy. Like you could, you could read on like how these things transition there through math, science, social, blah, blah, blah. But the question is why? And why is it that this generation, this culture seems so skewed to want to be the next it, but 
even they have to realize that that space is small because there isn't a lot of space for these top tier everybody know if you make 45,000 or less all of what i've just said you can't enter you cannot the risk is way will always be greater than the reward because this isn't self-sustaining so you would say well then get a better job raise up in the ranks get your skills up time what are you commodifying except your time why did we grow up still liking the things that we do as children, still viewing the world with some type of semblance between happiness and complacency? If in fact, those two things have conditions on them to which you can't enjoy anymore as an adult, what society did you pick what area did you choose to enter in as you grew up that made you choose between the two? And why do we still have access to the things that make us feel that way, but we can't do anything with them? Big thought, big brain. This is the shit Jordan Peterson will then say like, it's because of the, of the fetishization of, of man and the, the, the idea of the hero complex falling in upon itself because of gender identity crisis, because in a society, you see how dumb it is to be Jordan Peterson? Like, I can make his point without ever, like, just based off the shit that's come out his mouth, you know, just based off that. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder how much of this. Oh, that's oh god! I love with my chat. All right, I'm gonna just say this real quick, just real quick, because I know we, we, I know we chatting. I know we chatting. That's a slow ass transition. That's a slow ass transition. Okay, my chat be on it sometimes, and when I say like sometimes people say the perfect like segue, it's like you think that's you're getting there. Keep going, keep going. So when I do that, that's one of the moments right there. Anyway, that's that's a good thing. Um. I wonder how much of this is unique to our generation versus just more visible because we're living in it now and the world is so much more connected by technology than it was in the past. This was considered in the past. And this is why I'm okay. Small segue off the, the, the thematic of the, of the piece, super small segue. This plays into the concept of why I believe in reincarnation and no God. But there, that there's a, there's a thing like it's when we get there, I, I'm going to have like 20,000 heads in chat before I ever get there. Because like, I need y'all to know that this shit run deep and it's not no conspiracy, nothing. You just contract religions and the thought of uh, the thoughts of the society as a main tenant whole um, and you get to a point where you notice the thread like anyway, um anyway. So back to the point, driving it home. It is unique. And there's one specific device that makes it unique. And it's funny that that's what my thought around commodifying our our we we literally gave up what made us feel like children is the name of this piece. Um, it's unique because of video. It's unique because you can connect different stories. You can connect different you can connect different ideologies together, but what you can't confront is that now you have opinions and ideals and circumstances that you can see with your own eyes, and then you have to create the story from it. Remember how we used to say that like, Okay, let's 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 do let's do let's do the let's do the fun part of this conversation because this thought does fizzle out right. I mean, I mean, I made the thought already, but I also just want to go a little deeper into it. Um, 
when you have a society that can remember what just happened, it is very hard to bind them when given an opportunity for an open-ended story. Like, Inception, Inception is a movie where it ends and you don't know if he's in the dream or not. But there are enough clues to give you an answer, but there are also enough clues not to give you an answer. What you can't dispute, however, is that there is a film called Inception. All you do is add thought to the process now. So our generation can see both before and after it in form and then sorry ooh ooh bad no bad statement just I'm just rolling it back just rolling it back bad sentence cuz I see where I was going but I, the words would have not made sense um you have a generation that can see both before this and after it but the space that they have is so limited in how it existed there was a really smooth golden period of needing to be around other people to enjoy new media we are not in that period anymore the transition was easy because we were children who absorbed shit everything that was new was for us the generation after us is competing with us. See, my dad didn't want to buy a fire stick. I thought it would be a good idea. Now that he's exposed to it, he likes it. They didn't market it to a 65 year old. They marketed it to us, but it's applicable on all coin sides. There is no specific. Why is there no specific? Because we sold off all that we loved that made us feel like children. And it became our identity so much so that people who create with the idea of giving you a vision also have to create with the idea of you buying the vision. There's no worth in just doing it to, oh, you're about to get the moment. Connected back to what I said earlier at the beginning of this what makes us feel like we have friends what gives you that feeling do you have to give it away to make people feel like you can be close with them or do you have to sell it there's no purpose in me going over to my friend christian's house to play smash bros even though he only lives a couple blocks away from me because at any time of the day I can sit down on my ass, in my bed, comfortable with a blunt in my mouth and play him. How can I get that same feeling out of that? How do I get the same feeling out of that? All right, dial up. Like, yo, like, Things that we found funny as kids, we'd have to share with one another. Things that we find funny as adults are chosen by fucking algorithms. No, this isn't a doomsday society is going towards like the robot age and we're all going to be fucking machines and blah, blah, blah. You can't eliminate like the core tenets of this. We all still go to Evo. We all still go to wrestling events. Like we all go to shit that like we really don't have to go to. (laughs) But we had a period in which we couldn't go to these things. And minus, you know, shit going a little left and right in other ways, I'm shit survived. You still was watching baseball in 2020. Different feeling, but those things survived. Maybe if we gave people a grace period to be able to transition. Maybe if we gave people resource uh, resources. I'll definitely go into introversion because uh, augmented reality, the met, and we're gonna, yo, it's so funny. We're gonna talk about the metaverse today. That like, that's so funny that I'm going into that because that is like one of the segments today of the metaverse. Um, like, you 
would need to figure out a way to make it easier for people to pull enjoyment out of things that they don't immediately need to commodify. That, that right there is the point of this entire thing. We gave up what we needed to feel like kids. And the problem is, is that we have ready at the call reminders. eBay, like, you know how long it used to take to track down somebody? eBay, I'm gonna just Google it and somebody's selling it somewhere. The hunt isn't as good. Why the fuck would I drive? Because I heard about some flyer dude guy doing a thing with a guy selling a Game Boy Advance. Like, I can just order it off of eBay. I can get in the bidding. I could be a part of an auction. There's so much that you couldn't do. So what gives you that drive? It can't be the fundamentals of making under $45,000 a year. Now, you'll notice, you'll notice, I didn't mention above 45,000, I didn't mention above 90,000, I didn't mention above 300,000, over 400,000, I didn't mention millionaires and billionaires. But those are the people with the money, so can't they like find enjoyment out of it? How'd they get the money? 